Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. It is so good to be coming to you today, this afternoon, this beautiful Lord's Day. Uh, it is Palm Sunday. This begins the official beginning of what is called the Passion Week as we're leading up to Easter next Sunday. Oh, we've got so much to talk about and so much to praise the Lord about. Greetings from Palace Ridge, Alabama on this beautiful day. I hope you will worship with us now as my beautiful wife sings some worship music and just worship with us wherever where you're at right now. Get the mind off of everything else and let's just worship the Lord a little bit. they grow. You know, if we just ever stop and think about the goodness of God. He takes care of you and I in every situation, every circumstance. No matter what we might be no matter what we might be going through, He is taking care of you and I. Just as He says His word that He takes care to consider the lilies of the field. They don't toil or snare, but yet the Father cares more for them. He clothes them. Consider the fowls of the air. They don't hunt and plant and everything. But the Father takes care of them. Even so, He takes care of you and I if we were there to this. Consider the lily. So oh, let's just continue to worship and praise Him and everything that we're doing. If you got the Bibles tonight, today, this afternoon, oh, Matthew, chapter 21. Today is Palm Sunday. 
talk to our Lord, we're celebrating today, Christians today are celebrating this momentum day. Uh, it, it is the official end of Lent, a time of fasting and reflection. And we're coming quickly upon the Passover, which this year will be on Wednesday, and then we will celebrate Easter, which is on Sunday. But if you ever stop to consider and wonder what is the significance of Palm Sunday. Let's put our voices and I am going to open up in prayer for us and we'll just, as we breathe, we'll stop and talk. Father, we love you today. We worship you. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the great I am. Father, there's nothing beyond your control, nothing beyond your power. Father, you're still on the throne in all things. Now, Father, I ask you to today to have your way. In everything that is done and said. Father, let everything that is done and said be for thy glory. Anoint me today. Hide me behind the cross, Father, that we might see the eye and lift it up. For if we don't see Jesus, we've missed the whole thing. Father, we do today in Christ's most holy name. Amen and amen. Everyone, beginning with verse 1. We read, And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and will come to Bethlehem, and unto the Mount of Olives. Then sent Jesus to then sent Jesus to disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find a donkey tied, and a coat with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say unto say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of thee. And straightway he will send thee he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, For ye the daughters of Zion. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon a donkey, and a coat, the fowl of a donkey. Now we see in these verses here that the cut that Jesus and his group is coming to, is beginning of Mount Olive into Jerusalem. This week, as I said, is the Passover week. He is preparing to go in, and as they're coming, he sends his disciples to head to find the, a donkey to, that he might ride into it. Was it because he was tired? No. Wasn't because he was tired or nothing like that. But it most needs that must be fulfilled. The weapons that found in Zechariah chapter 9, but before I read that verse, I want to read Zechariah. Mount Olive played a very important role in Bible history and Bible prophecy. Mount Olive is where we find much of what Jesus done in his ministry. He would often go there in times to pray. He it was here that he began his final descent into to, uh, into Jerusalem. It is also on Mount Olive that he that he ascended into heaven after his resurrection 40 days later. We read in Zechariah 4 that said, and, the, and his feet, talking about Jesus, the Messiah, shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the, the Mount of Olives, in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west and there shall be a very great valley and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half of it 
toward the south. There's coming a day, and I believe it's very soon, when Jesus is going to return to this earth. This, this world, what I'm talking about now, will occur at the end of the seven year tribulation. But when Jesus shall return to the earth and shall set his foot down outside of Jerusalem on Mount Olive one more time, every Jew knows that this verse is a prophecy of the Messiah to come. And that's what I was mainly wanting to get out. They understood that Mount Olive played a vital role in the prophecy of the Messiah. Of the Messiah. Now get to our verse today, Zechariah 9.9, 9, which Matthew quoted a while ago. Uh, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughters of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon a donkey, and upon the coat, that upon a coat, the fowl of a donkey. You see, every scribe, every Pharisee, every Sadducee, and really every Jew knew that this scripture right here refers to the Messiah. They understood that it was a messianic promise, that it was a promise of the Messiah to come. And Jesus was fulfilling that promise in Jerusalem on that day, on Palm Sunday, as he began his descent into the city, he coming on a donkey. Now, a donkey back then represented peace. Uh, a, a donkey represents peace. And when a king rode into a city, a conquering king, if he rode in on a horse, he was there for war. But when a king would come with his entourage, entourage of people, or riding on a donkey, he was there for a peaceful purpose. Jesus. Let's turn to read a little bit. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them and brought the donkey and the coat and put on them their clothing and they set him their own and they very, very great multitude spread their garments in the way others cut down branches off of the trees and we know in one of the other gospels that it was a palm tree that they cut branches off of them and straw them or lay them in the way, and the multitude went before, and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to in the highest. And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Now let me back up a little bit. Jesus is a great, great multitude that is following him and that is front of him. They are going into the, the city of Jerusalem. Luke points out in his uh, in his voice, they the story that at the top of Mount Olive, as they begin to come, that Jesus actually stops and begins to weep over Jerusalem, to weep forward because he realizes that that city is going to be destroyed. You see, he said to him, if you only knew how I long to take you and gather you under my wings, but I, I, I gather you with me as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you would not. You see, he understood and knew that the very ones uh, that were shouting at that moment, uh, Jesus knew their hearts, and the very ones that were shouting, Hosanna to the King, Hosanna to the Son of David, only within a few short days would be hollering, Crucify him, away with him. 
You see, Jesus knew the heart of all men. But we're told in Scripture as they come in that this great entourage, and understand it was customary then, as I said, for a king to come into a city riding on a donkey in a peaceful manner. And as if any king or great general or great honorable man would come riding in, many people would cushion their ways with clothes and with palm leaves, trees and stuff like that so they wouldn't be so bumpy and everything. They were paying Jesus homage as a king. As a matter of fact, one of the Gospels said, Blessed is the king. Blessed is the one that comes in the name of the Lord. And we must realize and understand that Jesus is the king of kings. He's the king of glory that has come for you and I today. We the world back then rejected him as I said only within a few short days the same ones uh, that were hollering uh, Hosanna uh, us Lord uh, I was the little now be hollering crucify him but you understand that this they were so moved uh, that they understood the life of Jesus. Uh, they were praising him for the many good works that he done. Uh, they were in his name. Uh, and they were at that time, Scripture says, uh, that I time wanting to make him king uh, even before his time. Uh, it, but they did the thing that they misunderstood uh, was that he had come for a purpose uh, to go to the cross. He understood that his purpose was not to stop at the temple with be honored as the king of the Jews, but it was to go to the cross, to go to Golgotha, to lay his life down for you and I. This is the beginning of Palm Sunday, upon our Passion Week. But let me go over a few things here. Barefoot pit, barefoot page, yeah, as I said earlier, this is the beginning of Passover. John tells us this is six days before Passover. Barefoot pit, or how you say that name, is many times the place where Jews would go through on their way to Jerusalem to get the sacrificial lamb that they were going to give as an offering. I thought that was interesting. There is in Jerusalem on the eastern wall what is called the Golden Gate. It is also called the Gate of Mercy. Many Jews believe that in, when the Messiah returns, those that have not accepted Jesus Christ as the Messiah, believe that when he returns and sets his feet on Mount Olive and comes down, he will go through the Golden Gate or the Gate of Mercy. Then. And that gate, incidentally, right now is bricked up. The Muslims trying to stop him and build a cemetery there, but it's not going to stop him. Jesus is coming, and he will go through that gate. And as I was saying, and uh, this, but many believe that this is the very gate, this golden gate, the gate of mercy. This is the very gate that Jesus come through this day. As the crowd is shouting, praising him. As a matter of fact, in one gospel and further on down in this one, it says that there were many uh, uh, Pharisees who were hearing what these disciples were saying and got upset and said, Jesus, you need to stop. Well, you need to stop your disciples. They knew that Jesus was fulfilling prophecy, but yet still would not receive. There was a story told of a, Jew, a Jewish man that went to his Jewish priest with a scripture. I believe it's in Isaiah 53, 6. Well, it talks about that he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. Chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. Isaiah 53, 4, I'm sorry. 
He went to his rabbi with that scripture and he asked his rabbi, he heard the scripture used to please it. And he asked his rabbi, I said, Rabbi, does this verse talk about Jesus? Does this verse point out Jesus and, and the whole context of it, not just that one verse? The rabbi looked at him and said, Well, said to tell you the truth, yes, it, it does refer to Jesus. That the Jews refused that Jesus Christ back then was the Messiah, so the official answer is, no, it does not. It's so sad when people know the truth and yet refuse to receive the truth. But they understood and knew that this was coming in. The palm branches represent if you ever really understood what the palm branches represent, I thought this was so good. The palm branches represent victory, triumph, peace, and eternal life. Jesus is the apprentice of peace. He comes to you and I, eternal life. There was a scripture found in Revelation, chapter 7, verse 9 through 12. After the rapture of the tribulation is going on, but the rapture of the saints still are in heaven. This is speaking of them. After this, I beheld a lower great which no man could number of all nations and all and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms or palm branches in their hands. They had overcome the world. They had overcome the world through the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. They had overcome and fought and gave their life for Christ. They Let me finish reading these verses. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders, and the four beasts fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Jesus in Jerusalem. On that Palm Sunday, victorious. In just a few short days would give us life, but yet on Easter Sunday, and we'll talk more about that, he was victorious over death. He won the final victory that day, or that Easter Sunday. But I'm going to ask you a question. Have you made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? Have you come to the place that you have received him today as your Lord and Savior? Would you be in that crowd shouting Hosanna to the highest? Worshiping him out of the Or would you be joining that crowd later in a few days when they say crucify him away with this man? For he has given you and I a choice. I know that we've got so much that is going on today, this coronavirus and all this other stuff. But we have got a choice today that we can follow Jesus. And I challenge you, if you have not made Jesus Christ your Lord and the Savior, or if you have and you have gotten away, I challenge you today, let today be the day that you come back home to him. Just pray. Just ask him to forgive you. 
Repent of your sins. He will forgive you. The, uh, Romans chapter 10 tells us, verse 13, says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Father, I thank you today. God, if you're still on the throne, and Father, I worship you on this beautiful, beautiful Palm Sunday. Father, I worship you in the midst of all that is going on right now. Father, realizing that around us is a great, great tragedy that is striking, a great plague that has hit our nation. But Father, I'm going to still worship you. Father, I thank you that there's nothing impossible for you. Now, Father, we ask that, Lord, you would touch and minister. Father, if there were any that hear this message sometimes or that, that have never made you their Lord and Savior, I ask that, Father, you would deal with their hearts, that, God, you would bring them to you before it's too late. God, I ask you to stretch forth your hand that you would deal with their hearts even now in a very heavy way. Now, Father, I ask that, Lord, you would reach out your hand, you would perform signs and wonders. God, that you would heal, deliver, set free, minister, Father, by your power and by your word. Father, that people today that are ill in their bodies will feel a touch that hurts of the Holy Spirit flowing through them. Father, even the word says that when you are in that city that day, that the blind and the lame come to you and you heal them. Father, you still heal today. Now, Father, stretch forth your hand. Healed by your power in your holy name, Father, we'll give you praise. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come against this coronavirus. Now, Father, it will be removed from American. Father, those that have and by it will be healed in the name of Jesus. Father, I believe in things to take place even this very week, Father. Your word is to God, there is nothing impossible for you. And I give you praise for it right now. God, I thank you in advance for it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb of the Living God. I encourage you, keep praying, keep believing. I'm believing that this week there's going to be a change in everything that's going on with this coronavirus. I, I believe it. I'm not trying to prophesy or nothing like that, but I'm just believing. And uh, 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 be praying, Christy. But I want to challenge you to do something. I, I, Liam was telling me uh, about somebody posted from Carrollton, I believe it was, that on, on Resurrection Sunday on Easter, if by chance there was no church services, that they were going to get up and they were encouraging people to, to go outside at sunrise. Just lift your hands. I begin to praise the Lord. And I'm going to challenge you to do that. Me and Leanne is planning on doing that. I'm going to challenge each and every one that hears this. Get up Sunday morning at, at daybreak. That's when the weather actually took place, according to the gospel. At daybreak. Just go outside. Just lift your hands and begin to praise Him. Praise him because he came victorious over death, hell, and the grave. Praise him for what he has done for you and I. Just begin to praise him for everything. Don't wait till then to praise him, but on that day, oh, what, what would happen if every child of God got out and we just began to praise him? I don't mean that now. Just for the heck of it. But I do believe 
that we do need to just praise him and worship him for it is our prayer that God will reach the blessed. Feel free to say that you want to be praying for us. We are praying for you that God will touch and minister. If you have a prayer request, that we'll be more than happy to pray with you and agree with you in prayer. We believe in the God that we pray to, that he is more than able. May God richly bless you with our prayer. Have a good and a blessed day.